Today we are going to talk about chapter 12, The Earth Moves, from the book A Short History of Nearly Everything by Bill Bryson. To begin with, Charles Hapkett is the first one to talk about the idea that the continents were in motion. Hapkett observed that some people had noticed an apparent correspondence in shape between certain continents. It might appear that South America might be fitted together with Africa. However, according to the fieldwork that was done by two other geologists on both sides of the Atlantic, Habgood dismissed any ideas that no such similarities had existed. Another idea flew with Habgood that was propounded in 1908 by an amateur American geologist called Frank Bristley Tyler. Tyler was one of those struck by the similarity in shape between the facing coastlines of Africa and South America. According to his observation, he developed the idea that the continents had once slid around. But unfortunately, Tyler's theory too was considered unplanned to deserve serious attention. But due to the outbreak of World War I, Taylor's theory did not attract much attention at first. However, by 1920, when he produced the revised one, it quickly became a subject of discussion and everyone agreed that continents moved. In Germany in 1912, Taylor's idea was picked up by a theorist called Alfred Wegener, a meteorologist at the University of Marburg. He investigated some animal fossils that turned up to be on the opposite sides of the oceans that were clearly too wide to swim. He was confused and thought about how did some animals like marsupials travel from South America to Australia. Later on, Wegener developed the theory that the world's continents had once come together in a single landmass called Panjai before the continents had split apart and floated off to their present positions. He put all these together in a book called The Origin of Continents and Oceans, which was published in 1912. Drop your coat, get over yourself, kick your shoes to the floor, and run from your cover. Another idea, the baked apple theory, propounded by the Austrian Edward Swiss. His theory suggested that, as the molten earth had cooled, it had become wrinkled in the manner of a baked apple, creating ocean basins and mountain ranges. However, if Swiss's theory was correct, then mountains should be evenly distributed across the face of the earth, which in fact were not and of more or less of the same age. Unfortunately, Alfred Wegener was not the man that geologists wished to provide for the reason that he had no background in geology. Then, geologists tried to discharge his evidence and put down his suggestions by mentioning that there were identical fossils on different continents via inserting the idea of the existence of land bridges. However, the idea of the land bridges did not satisfy anybody because there was no evidence that proves that there were any remnants of those land bridges. Then people started to accept Wegener's idea, but several questions were asked about how do these land masses move about. The one who proved it right was an English geologist called Arthur Holmes. He suggested that Radioactive warming could produce convection currents within the earth and he mentioned that this was capable enough to prove that these continents slid around the surface. In 1944, Holmes laid out the continental drift theory which is the movement of the earth's continents relative to each other. 
Later on, a theory called sea floor spreading was proposed by a Princeton University mineralogist, Harry Hess, in the 1960s. This theory was all about a new oceanic crust is repeatedly being re created from the flowing magma at the mid-ocean ridge and being pushed out to either side. In the 1968, the name continental drift was replaced by plate tectonics when it was realized that the whole crust was in motion and not just the continents. However, many scientists insisted that plate tectonics was a physical impossibility. The global positioning systems mentioned that Europe and North America are parting at about the speed a fingernail grows. Also, it was mentioned that Earth is alone among the rocky planets in having tectonics. Our story ends here with a sad ending in which Alfred Wegener went on expedition to Greenland in 1930. He set out alone on his 15th birthday to check out a supply drop. He never returned. He was found a few days later frozen to death on the ice. In addition, Einstein also failed to live long enough to see that he had backed the wrong course. He did in 1955 before Charles Habgood's rubbishing of continental drift theories was even published.